okay so everyone uh, we are going to see advanced java questions now okay and i hope i expect uh, you all will be preparing on those uh, these questions will be on the youtube also and uh, i'll be uploading this recording now the first question which we will take without taking much time what is difference between jdbc and hibernate I already told to every every fresher. I already told to every fresher. You need to speak. What you understand, what you understood till now, doesn't matter. So whenever it, this question is asked in interview, you need to explain this properly. You should have some bullet points ready. So we'll try here how to give answer on this. What is the difference between JDBC and Hibernate? So you should be saying. JDBC is old technology, whereas Hibernate is a newer technology. Hibernate is a wrapper of JDBC. See, these two statements never said differences between these two. But, but we made here warm up of the answer. It warm up. Hota hai. Here, what you need to see always warm up. Warm up ka matlab kya hota hai ki, uh, you should. Uh, regularize this answer Matlab, before giving answer you should be saying something don't tell directly number one number two number three like that so here what i did what is difference between jdbc and hibernate i said jdbc is a old technology hibernate is a very new technology uh, hibernate internally works uh, as a jdbc that's why hibernate is little slower in the performance but jdbc is a faster but jdbc is a faster so i'll i'll make here like this hibernate and here jdbc so hibernate is a faster sorry uh, slower performance but whereas jdbc is a faster in performance second thing in hibernate you need to write less code you need to write less code that's why your development will be faster now you observe guys how to give answers to an interview don't say faster slower slower faster you should speak with some you know some rigid reasons for it what i said in hibernate you need to write less code you need to write less code and that's why our development becomes faster here you need to write more code that's why development will be slower this is our most important thing next here you will see built-in functions here you will see built-in functions whereas here no built-in functions but here also while speaking he may cross questioning you like execute query is there in jdbc don't you think that's a built-in function so you should say yes these are the built-in functions so while saying this built-in function you should say built-in functions for crude operations then it will be better for crude operations add update delete okay so like that here no built-in functions for crude operations so like that you should be preparing next here there is a concept of dialect concept of dialect and that's why that's why db migration is easy here no dialect no concept of dialect db migration is tougher in JDBC, you need to write SQL queries. Here we use SQL, whereas here we use HQL. So this is the answer you should be giving to an interviewer if this question is asked. And remember, guys, if this question is asked, you should be more than happy because interviewer didn't go inside the Hibernate. He just wanted to check whether you know Hibernate or not. So elaborate this question properly. Like these questions, you should not miss in interview. You must be telling proper answers to this this question also checks your communication skill how you communicate because this question is simpler this question is very simple that's why they will be even checking how you talk how you speak how you represent yourself how you take judgment of a question and how you start for your answer so all these things are getting checked here <clears throat> next what is a built-in methods in hibernate can you explain each of them in brief try and understand like this question you should never say there are five uh, this thing 
there are five methods there are six methods don't say like that don't say like that there are eight methods otherwise what will happen if you speak like this there are eight methods then he will say okay first second third and most of the cases this happens as per my experience people forget after five so don't say this, there are eight six or five methods there are plenty of methods okay so you should say there are many methods out of which out of which some of the methods are save this is used for inserting a data load this is used for loading a data on the basis of primary key then there is a save or update this method does insertion or updation of a record on the basis of primary key on the basis of primary key then there is a method called update this method helps us to update a data on the basis of primary key again you need to set data before that then delete this is help, helpful for deleting data and anyway this is just a fresher questions but uh, experienced people also need to give same answers i will be saying multiple times freshers because now placement for placement i need you guys to prepare on this that's why i'm saying again and again freshers because there are multiple openings and freshers are not able to speak this so save load save or update update delete like that there are multiple methods etc etc methods are there so you can explain each one of them these are these are the for crude operations these methods are for crude operations then next question comes in can we explain criteria in hibernate criteria in hibernate so you try to analyze what he said explain so don't just give two word answer okay so speak at least some four five statements in hibernate there are multiple built-in functions which have certain limitations but which have certain limitations but due to criteria these limitations are sorted out these limitations are uh, removed and criteria helps us criteria helps us to solve all the problems which were there by built-in functions i will not say that's a problem but those were the limitations okay so so let's say uh, this is what the criteria is now in criteria you need to create an object of criteria first and to get all the record there is a list method first of all you need to create a criteria object criteria object and then you need to <coughs> session dot create criteria give this syntax to interviewer okay and to fetch all the records you need to to fetch all the records you need to call list method criteria dot list criteria dot list with this list of employees or list of students will get fetched out from the database in criteria there are many more things like expressions are there where you can have some conditions also there are built-in methods like eq any q any not equal to like like that built-in functions also there so here here as hibernate orm tool as hibernate orm tool everything everything is inbuilt everything is inbuilt means built-in functions built-in conditions everything is there there is a restriction class also which also helps us to give restrictions in the criteria projections also we can use inside a criteria that's it this this answer is enough guys okay so uh, plan yourself like how much you want to spend on which answer can you explain uh, criteria uh, in the hibernate it should be query just a second just a second just a second so this is fourth question guys can you explain query in hibernate answer is yes in query you can use hql this you should be saying first and before telling answer as i am always saying first do warm up of answer warm up warm up means like we do exercises and we do warm up first then we go into gym on the machines to do some uh, exercises like that for every answer you should be speaking something so here also you can say same thing like built in functions have some limitations and to uh, avoid those limitations we 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 are using query so here in query it's a interface you should say it's a interface query is a interface in a hibernate query is a interface in a hibernate where query is interface in a hibernate 
where you can write your own queries. But you don't need to use SQL queries, whereas you will be using HQL queries. Uh, now, start telling difference between SQL and HQL. In SQL, you need to write table name. You need to write table name, then column names. Whereas in HQL, you don't need to write all these things. You don't need to write all these things. Uh, in HQL, you need to write column names. You need to write column names and class name, which is an entity class. So that is how it is. That is how it is. In criteria, uh, in query, you also can use SQL queries also by using a, a method called create SQL query. Here also you need to use list method to get all the records of the uh, students or employee or any table. This is how it is. This is a query. Then next question will be this. What are the files required to do simple insert operation? What are the files required to do simple insert operation in Hibernate? So you should be saying, don't say again one, two, three, four, five like that. Okay. But if you are giving numbering, if you are confident, then obviously you give like number one, then number two, number three, number four, number five, like that. So here I would say, if this question has been asked to me, then being a fresher, I would be saying files required to do simple insert operation hibernate. I need, first of all, table. I will need table, then I will need entity class, then I will need entity class, then I will be needing Hibernate CFG file, Hibernate CFG XML, I will be needing jar files, I will be needing jar files, I will be needing client class, I will be needing client class. And while talking, if you want to show off your knowledge, say, see, there is a concept of show off. Show off means talking unnecessary things. Unnecessary things means valuable things so what you should be saying i will be speaking this see how i should be having table with columns uh, having primary key then i will be having entity class with the same name as that of table name uh, i can change it but uh, better to have entity class same with the table uh, with their entity annotations i uh, entity annotation i will be using their entity annotation i will be using in this entity class then uh, for primary key, I'll be using at ID. For primary key, I'll be using at ID annotation. So we explained him. He will not get more chances to ask you question. And while giving answers, you are extending a time. Let's say interview as of 40 minutes now. So you will be taking out of the 10 minutes for one simple question. And you are telling something valuable. So table, then there is a Hibernate CFG file. Uh, while talking, you should say uh, Hibernate CFG file where you can have some configuration of a database, database username, password, port, URL, dialect you will be mentioning here, dialect which will be used for DB migration, like that, keep on talking, okay. Then you can have Hibernate jar, whatever version you are using for Hibernate, you need to download those jars and put it in the build path. Th these are the things which we need, client. <coughs> Client code. Now, client code means here you need to create session factory object, then session object, and after session, as this is insert option operation, we might need transaction object. We might need transaction object, and we can use save function. And after using save function of session interface, I'll be committing a transaction. So that is how it is. So this is the <clears throat> this is the uh, way of doing. This is a way, way, way for doing a insert operation in Hibernate. See guys, here I've shown you two flavors. I'm telling you very clearly, I have shown you two flavors. I have shown you two flavors, okay? One without uh, explaining much and another way by explaining too much, okay? So you need to choose where you are comfortable. You need to choose where you are comfortable, how you talk, how you express. That is very, very important. That is very, very important. <laughs> then, <clears throat> Next question will be, what are the advantages of Hibernate? What are the advantages of Hibernate? So, uh, Hibernate is a latest technology than the JDBC. Hibernate is ORM tool, so you don't need to deal with SQL queries, columns, and database. Advantage of Hibernate is like uh, DB migration is very easy, slow, cool, 
means don't just uh, be hasty like telling answers uh, very fastly <clears throat> it's not like a rapid fire you should explain express so hibernate is used for db migration in hibernate there are a concept called criteria queries which is help us to fire custom queries we have built in functions which reduces our time for development which reduces our time for development which reduces our time for development uh, in hibernate you don't need to have a sql knowledge much because queries will get generated by hibernate by using a dialect automatically configuration uh, we need to have a separate in jdbc we need to write configurations in java file whereas in hibernate we need to write configurations in xml file which is easy to change which is easy to change you don't need to compile xml file so these are all uh, advantages these are all advantages of a hibernate they are all advantages of a hibernate next Now, what is the difference between Solid and JSP? This is the seventh question in the placement list, okay? So these are the most frequently asked questions every fresher should know. What is the difference between Solid and JSP? So both technologies uh, will be running on the server. Both technologies runs on a, on a server. Both technologies runs on a server. Solid is used as a backend, server as a backend, whereas JSP as a frontend, JSP as a Okay. In JSP, you can have HTML code also, in HTML code and Java code, in HTML code and Java code, whereas in Solid, in Solid, only you need to have a Java code because it's a Java class. Uh, server is, uh, Solid are faster, JSP is slower because JSP is anyway getting converted into Solid in future and that's why, that's why JSP is uh, not that faster. So these are the differences between Solid and JSP. In JSP, there are various features like scriptlet, expression, declaration concepts are there, whereas in Solid, you don't have. In Solid, there is a init service destroy method. So these are the differences. Keep on telling, keep on telling, okay? <clears throat> keep on telling these things. Now, let's say somebody asks you a question, like this is the eighth question, guys. Somebody asks you a question, which is faster, JSP or Solid? So don't say Solid and keep quiet. No. What I'm saying is try to explain things because since you are a fresher experience, it is by default expected that you will be explaining. But since you are a fresher, they want to see how you represent and how you communicate. That's why what you're telling, what you're telling here, how, how to tell. See, uh, Solid is a faster because Solid is getting compiled and it will get run and output will be displayed. Whereas in JSP, it gets converted into Solid first. And then this Solid will get compiled. Solid will run and output will occur. In JSP, this extra phase is there of a conversion. Conversion of JSP to Solid. That will be done by JSP engine. That's why, that's why JSP is slower. Then, Coming to next question. Can you explain life cycle of Solid? Explain in detail. So whenever you are starting to tell Solid life cycle, you should be saying whenever we send first request from the browser, automatically Solid will get initialized by using annotation called web servlet. There is a mapping which we provide in JSP form action. Whenever it is first reached to servlet, servlet will get instantiated, init method will get called, and then service will get called, and client will get served. Whatever we write in service will get executed. This happens at the first request. Whenever second request, third request, and onward requests will be going on, that time, directly they reach to service method they won't go to constructor and init method this is how flow goes on any request you send it goes to service method 
But whenever we stop a server, automatically destroy method will get called. To write here, you should be explaining as a first request, what happens that you should be telling and then nth request, okay? So like that, and then you should say server stop. Whenever you are stopping server, which method will get called? Destroy, destroy method will get called. Whenever you are stopping a server, destroy method will get called. In this nth request, only service will get called. That this, these are the small points you should be remembering, just hints I'm giving. Listen this audio very properly uh, whenever it will be uploaded to YouTube or when, anywhere you get recording. Pause it and try to speak as I speak. Okay, try to speak as I speak. Constructor, then init, then service. Service, okay. Next. So these are the things which you should not forget while telling life cycle. Life cycle means starting to end. You should be explaining in this way. Then this is a 10th question, guys. Can we explain life cycle of JSP? Okay. So here, when this question is asked, this is a life cycle of servlet. Here you should be saying, firstly, JSP converts into a into a servlet and then say servlet so this is simple servlet life cycle start now see hint here don't tell everything of the servlet only this is what which is different only this is what which is different other than that everything is same as we saw in the last question as we saw in the last question so, servlet and JSP, only one phase is, uh, only one phase is different there. That is a conversion. Other than that, everything is same. Other than that, everything is same. Coming to next question. Can you explain complete flow of on scenario where student will get added into database public scheme? Guys, these questions interview were intentionally asked to see how much practical exposure you have. How much practical? The person who has done this practically will be able to elaborate this very easily, very properly. Like what he will be saying, see. And don't take out, don't take my words, my statements as it is. You try to put your words uh, in your mouth for interviewer. Complete flow of scenario where students get added into database from the JSP. So you should be explaining in a way called, uh, firstly, JSP will be, what you should be seeing, for JSP I will be designing, then I will have, be having database. From JSP, my request will be going to Sowlet. From JSP, my request will be going to Sowlet. In Sowlet, I will be receiving the data. In Sowlet, I will be receiving the data. I'll be processing data and then I'll be calling one ordinary class, one ordinary class, which will be a model, which will be model where I'll do more processing. Database related code will be there. Then I'm sending that data to database. From database, data will be received in the model. Because my data is inserted in database because here it has been saying student inserted into database or not that I'm going to check. If it is checked, then response comes to model, then model sends to servlet, and then servlet will be navigating to thanks page, thanks page. So this is a flow, uh, you don't need to buy heart. You need to tell this flow if you have done a practical, okay? So you'll be able to tell, it's an easy one. What are the implicit objects of JSP? So you should be saying implicit objects means the objects which are already present in a JSP. Uh, anyway, JSP is a servlet <clears throat> in background. So there are multiple objects like request, response. These are the objects which are there in the JSP inbuilt. We can use them directly, very directly. Out, config, page context. This you need to buy hard. Page context, session, exception, like that many more objects are there. So these are the some of them. So these objects are there in the JSP. 
these objects are there in the JSP. We need to just list out. Don't need to, we don't need to tell meaning of everything. How to write a servlet? Servlet is used at the back end. See how I'm starting to give answer. Servlet will be used at the back end. Whenever we send request from JSP, it reaches to servlet first. It reaches to servlet. And whenever we are writing a servlet, first of all, we need to have an annotation called web servlet, where we are, we are going to do mapping, where we are going to do mapping so that JSP will be mapped where JSP will be mapped form action. Then we'll be overriding some method. Then we'll be overriding some method like uh, do get or do post or do get or do post. But if we want to serve everyone, then we'll be writing service method. Then we'll be writing service method. Almost one very important thing while writing servlet, we'll be writing like this class login servlet extends HTTP servlet. This we should not forget, guys. This is very, very important. Okay, So this is how we write a servlet. So what are the things, important things? While uh, preparing for interview, you should be remembering these things. One, two, three. These three things you should not forget. So you need to decide what to prepare and what not to prepare. Okay. So this is the first thing. This is a Second thing, this is the third thing, any method out of it. So these are the steps to write a servlet. These are the steps to write a servlet. Then interviewer might ask again one basic question. What is the difference between service, init, service, and destroy? You should say these are the life cycle methods of a servlet. These are the life cycle methods of a servlet. These are the life cycle methods of a servlet. In these methods, these methods will get called automatically. Whenever we send a first request, whenever we send a first request, init method will get called. And whenever it is needed to serve a client again and again, the service method will get called. Whenever, whenever we stop a, a server, then automatically destroy method will get called. This will destroy method will get called only at the time of server stop only at the time of server stop. That means everything is collapsed. So this is what the difference you need to tell here. Means basically you should be remembering init, first request, service, all request, destroy method at server stop, at server stop. These are the three methods uh, which are used which are used uh, for uh, designing a servlet. These are the servlet. Sometimes this question will be asked, guys, whether you know servlet JSP and Spring Boot technologies, whether you understood concepts or not, to check that. So you should say yes. Yes. In servlet JSP programming, we need to write more code, whereas in Spring, we need to write less code. Here, more code here. Write less code. Here, write less code. In server JSP programming, we don't have much annotations, whereas in Spring, everything will be handled by annotations. In server JSP, whenever we write a <coughs> servlet, we can write one servlet for one request, whereas in Spring, one controller for multiple requests. In server JSP, we don't get chance to write different different method names we always need to rely on service method do get method do post method. in spring you can write your own methods only you need to give an annotation called at request mapping only need to give <clears throat> this thing as a request mapping this is how it is so these are the differences uh, in spring you don't need to write much code in Spring, you don't need to write much code, but in server JSP, you need to. Here, you need to use request dispatcher. Here, you don't need to automatically. View resolver will be taking care of it. So you don't. You only need to pass JSP name. So these are the overall differences between server JSP and Spring. So guys, here I <clears throat> covered 15 questions. 15. This 14th question you might have seen. This is how to write a servlet. 
So these are the steps, <coughs> implicit objects, complete flow, <coughs> then life cycle of JSP, then life cycle of subnet <coughs> faster, difference between subnet JSP, advantages of hypernet, what files we require, query, criteria, hypernet, it's all things we have seen. Okay. So I hope uh, this will be useful for you all. Okay. And uh, you might have understood also the, these things which we already saw in classes and and hope you'll be uh, hope you will be uh, reading all these things listening to this and listening to this and and we'll be preparing for interview thank you guys